Well, good morning, everybody. I said, good morning, everybody. That's better. At least we know there's somebody out there alive. Mikey, you got anything to say right off the bat? Apparently not. He's playing with his things. I'm not loud. Am I loud? Am I too loud? Am I too loud? I'll back off a little bit. How about that? Y'all ready? We're glad to see everybody this morning. Looks like we got a pretty good crowd. Uh, I don't even know what we're doing. Oh, yeah, I know what we're doing. It's yours. Well, I forget. I'm old. In A, isn't it? I don't know. I rolled down G. You rolled down G. I rolled. I didn't write nothing down. What? We, who rolled down anything on mine? Anybody know? Well, let's just go with it. Mr. Ryan on the steel. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. Nobody rides but the righteous and holy. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is a free train. This train. This train is a free train. This train. This train is a free train. Everybody rides in Jesus' name. This train is a free train. This train. All right, somebody pick it. This train don't pull no lives, this train. This train don't pull no lives, this train. This train don't pull no lives, no false pretenders on the backsliders. This train don't pull no lives, this train. This train is a clean train, this train. This train is a clean train, this train. This train is a clean train, everybody rides in Jesus' name. This train is a clean train, this train. Do you want to ride it, children, this train? Do you want to ride it, children, this righteous train? Get on board, get on board, get on board, get on board, get on board this holy train. Yes, get on board, get on board, get on board, get on board, get on board this holy train. All right, y'all awake now? If not, Mike will wake you up here in a minute because he's going to start talking. Good morning, y'all. See, I told you. Would you make Mr. Charles Dunn playing bass guitar for us this morning feel welcome? <laughs> He messed up and told me a couple of weeks ago, he said, you know, I play bass guitar, it's been a while, but miraculously Joe had to have the day off, so I give him a call, and here he is, and doing a good job. We appreciate it. <laughs> Do we have any first-time visitors here today? Got one in the back? One, two, Some three. Right here. All right. It's good to have you this here. morning. We got two over here. 
Two where? More over here. Oh, two up there in the front. Two young jokes. And two up there in the front. In the right. youth section. All right. Well, we are glad that you chose JC3 as your place to worship. We do things just a little bit different here. We uh, play live music with a full band most of the time. Brenda yodels every now and again. Ed tries, but uh, I think Miss Charlotte asked him not to try that no more. That's the story that we heard this morning anyway. <laughs> she thought he had done got himself hurt. <laughs> I just had to tell that. Anyway, we uh, we do things just a little bit different. We do not pass the hat here. We believe that uh, that giving is between you and the Holy Spirit. So if you uh, feel the urge to give, we have a couple of wooden churches out back here. There's one in the foyer as well that you can do that with. Um, there's a yellow, yellow piece of paper in the chair in front of you. That's called a communication card. If you have a need for the church, prayer request, anything like that, you can fill that out and drop it in the churches as well. Yeller. I think it's yellow. My yellow card? Anymore. Yeller. What I say? Yellow. Yeller. But there you go. Potato. I think Ed just woke up wanting to argue with somebody this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got anything else you want to say before we pray? Let's pray. Okay. God, I love you. I thank you for this day and all your blessings. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. God, I just ask that right now your spirit would be in this place. God, I pray that the music service, Father, would be pleasing to you. I ask right now, God, that you would be with Pastor Chet as he brings the message. God, give him the words to say that we need to hear this morning. Father, and if there's one here that don't know you today, I pray that today would be the day that that relationship status would change. Father, forgive us of sin. Use us for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. What are we doing now? Jesus. <laughs> God sent his son They called him Jesus He came to love Heal and forgive He bled and died To buy Savior lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I. Thank you. 
That's what happens when you write it down on the paper wrong. Yes, yeah, I, I knew that wasn't the gear I wanted to be in. Well, that's because you put me in the wrong key when you started. Yeah, see, you put G on me instead of you. That's because I'm so good, I guess. He ain't got nothing to say about that, has he? I was thirsty. <laughs> oh, y'all gonna like this. You're gonna bring the... Hold on. You're gonna bring the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. On this yeah, last yeah, song, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I need the elders and the lay pastors to come up. Hey, I know you guys thirsty. I done lost my mind. Hey, yeah, I know y'all can't see it up there, out there, but he's got sweat running yeah, down buddy. the side of his face. It's hot in here to a fat boy. <laughs> come on up, elders and lay pastors. We're going to, uh, this last song will be an opportunity if you have a prayer need, you can come up and get with one of these guys and they'll pray with you. Or you can pray with them. They need prayer as well. But, you know, we had need a bunch, so y'all remember us while you're praying. Okay? Yeah, y'all please do that. Y'all love this one. Especially Mike, yeah. I dream of a city called glory. It was so Glory to the 
Y'all got to come help me do the pledge. Y'all stand up. We got to do the pledge. I know you do it in school. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you make welcome, Pastor Chet? How many of you thankful he loves older people? Yeah. Middle-aged people. How many of y'all thankful the Lord loves you? <laughs> Amen. But God loves us all, but I, I really have a special place in our heart for children's ministry, mainly because many times children's ministry is kind of out of sight, out of mind. They take the kids, but they preach the, and teach the Word of God to them upstairs on Wednesday night. Some of our teenagers are here today. There'll be 25 or 30 uh, teenagers upstairs on Wednesday night. So we're always uh, reaching out to our young people. Uh, many of us know, you know, if, if you live very long, young people face things today that we didn't when we were young, right? A lot of different things. So uh, I'm just thankful that God's Word never changes, and I'm thankful that God uh, raises people up to teach our young people. So anytime you see a children's worker, a nursery worker, or somebody that works with the youth, the teenagers, thank them and tell me you appreciate them because that is a ministry that's dear to God's heart. Thank God all ministry is important. But uh, we want to welcome you today. If you are a visitor and you don't have a church home, we say welcome home. We want you to uh, make sure if you didn't, and uh, if you did get a bulletin, in the middle of that bulletin, it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on here at the church this month, or this week. Um, make sure when you leave, if you look on the tables when you leave, right before you go out the exit door, get get a bulletin, let you know kind of what's going on here at the church, and we want to welcome you to our church if you are a visitor. Communication cards, Mike mentioned that earlier, that yellow communication card, if you'd like to be water baptized, become a member of the church, anything that you need to communicate with us we even if it's a prayer request fill that out drop it in the the wooden churches uh, we don't pass the hat here at cowboy church as he said but god's faithful to meet our needs when we bring our tithes and offerings to him so there's two one in each side of the auditorium one in the foyer uh this year that uh, we're going to do an angel tree that'll be our mission team and the deadline to turn in your application for Angel Tree, they are at the welcome desk, is today. So make sure you get those turned in. Stop by on your way out and stop by the sale barn. I know some of the sale barn ladies are out of town today, but it's open. Uh, Miss Lori, are you back there today in the sale barn or somebody's running it? it it's open, right? 
Uh, that'll be good. You look like a deer in a headlight there. Caught you, off, caught you off guard for a minute. She's reading her bulletin like I told her to do. But stop by the sale barn. There's lots, lots, of, lots of neat stuff in there. Lots of ways. Lots of caps and shirts. They donate money back to our Wednesday night meals, which brings me to our next announcement on Wednesday nights. We always have a meal at 6 o'clock and we have church at 7. So you want to take advantage of Wednesday nights if at all possible. Uh, this next Wednesday night, I believe, is the 18th. Is that right? Is it this coming Wednesday? We're going to have a Thanksgiving meal. So the hospitality team is providing the meat, but we need, tell us what we need, sides, desserts, anything. And you can sign up at the welcome desk. The sign up list is getting longer and longer and longer. And all the guys were patting our belly saying, thank the Lord. Amen. But we, we'll love our Thanksgiving meal. It, it'll be November the 18th. But we have a service every Wednesday and a meal to go with it. Men's prayer breakfast is every Monday morning at 6 a.m. That'll be here in the morning. Uh, I mentioned earlier our teenagers. I'm really proud of our youth. Miss Tisha does a good job, and, and she's got volunteers that help her. If anybody feels like they would like to help with the youth, holler at me, and I'll hook you up with Miss Tisha. They, they do a good job with our teenagers. And, and there, there's lots of opportunities. God opens doors of opportunity no matter what ministry we do. If it's a welcome wagon to the arena or the youth, God opens doors. Just this week, we were able to, uh, God opened the door for us to be a blessing to people just from the youth ministry so you never know and uh, we all know that God uses and speaks and Jesus said out of the mouth of babes and so the Lord uses young people and, and uses those who work with them they're special to my heart if you want to be a part of the youth holler at me and I'll hook you up the buckaroos are back rolling upstairs in nursery thank the Lord we have a full-time nursery worker if you have a little one you want to take to the nursery the easiest way is go right there where that nursery sign is go around the edge take the first door to the left and you'll see Miss Tracy in the nursery with thankful that she's here um, every Sunday and Wednesday, an hour before service and a little bit after, so for you to be able to drop your kiddos off in the nursery and Sunday school. Don't forget we have Sunday school. The men and women both meet. Miss Allison had a great Sunday school class today. The guys had a great Sunday school class. That's at 9 a.m. every Sunday. There's a sign-up list in the back. Miss Melissa Mallett, uh, drive through for the life of Christ. We've got a sign-up list. We're going to do something as an outreach to the community here in the church parking lot to set up different scenes throughout the life of Christ and be a witness for him. And we've got the dates down. So if you're interested in that, what's the date? Do you remember that, Allison? December 13th, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, December 13th. So be sure and sign up. See Miss uh, Ann or someone at the welcome desk. Get your name on the list if you're interested. New members class is today. We're going to have a new members class right after church. If you're coming to new members class, raise your hand. I want to see it. There's food involved. Amen. Good. What a good turnout. Uh, new members class will meet right after church. And we'll feed you right after the membership class. It won't take a long time. Uh, let's see. December the 6th is going to be a big day here at the church. It's going to be arena day. We're going to have services always at 1030. Right after church, the concession stand will be open for those that would like to stay. And we're going to have an arena day. We're going to have some uh, games for people that want to play games in the foyer, uh, board games and such. We're going to buck some bulls in the arena. We're going to uh, have some horse Horses. We'll probably have some, we will have some mutton busting. So uh, we're just going to have a good fun day out in the arena. And uh, worst case scenario, if it rains, we're still going to have the concession stand food. And we'll have uh, something going on in the foyer either way. So we're going to try to get these fellowships going on monthly and at, at the most every other month. So it's good, good opportunities for us to do things with our arena and reach out. So you know anybody wants to get on some bulls, we'll get Miss Jamie on the flyer. Uh, kind of spread the word. We'll get them out to you next week. That way, uh, anybody wants to get on some practice bulls, if you just want to come hang out, we'll have some gentle horses to lead line some of the smaller kids that may want to lead line. We need to, uh, we're going to look at some things. We may even have a, a, a sheep dressing. Now, you, you've, you, we're, we've used calves before, but we, we've got plenty of sheep for the mutton busting, so we may have some teams put together for the sheep dressing. If you have not, 
uh, checked out the playground. Uh, they built a nice playground, pull around the back of the church back here and uh, look at the playground. We appreciate everybody. It's going to be huge. It's a big playground. We're starting to work on getting some uh, basketball goals and stuff. Cody mentioned that last week. So thank God for that. We're in the progress of that. Uh, Mr. Robert Byerly came to me earlier and said, hey, I got, I got a praise report for you. I said, what's that? And he said, me and my wife tomorrow will be have been married 29 years. Let's give them a hand clap. Amen. That's a long time. <laughs> Amen. 29 years. That's a, that's a blessing. I believe that's all of our announcements. Uh, man, if you have your Bible, let's go ahead and, and, and open our Bibles up. And we'll, in a little bit, we're going to go to Psalms chapter 25, verse 1. But before we do that, I want to welcome all of our viewers online, our Facebook viewers. Let's give them a hand clap. Amen. Tell you what, it's good to see the old church about full. We 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 picking on up. I'm I'm glad we we've had a crazy year this year. But you know, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So we appreciate those that are logging in online and watching us. Man, we reach a lot of people. But it's good to good to, good to see our church. Good to see everybody smiling face. Y'all smile at me out there. Amen. Y'all a good looking bunch. When I call you good looking, you always say amen. So it is a good looking bunch, good looking service today. And if you can't be here in person, though, we want to welcome you. Uh, those people watch from different states. I know they probably have to have a little translator button. And uh, somebody's been watching from New York. And I figured, boy, don't you know they have to push the button and translate what that redneck just said. We don't know what he said. We got to hit the button on that. But we welcome you no matter where at. Uh, one day I noticed somebody from California and from New York, anywhere in between. But it doesn't matter if you're just a couple hours down the road, man. We, we call you home. We appreciate you. Uh, it's a privilege nowadays, me and Miss Allison, we get calls from people that uh, we really pastor uh, a lot of people when you figure on those that we pastor through Facebook and all those different things. There's customers and friends of ours that live hours from here, but yet they, they call this church their home. And so it blesses my heart. I'm thinking that we can reach everybody, but if you can be within driving distance, we encourage you to come see us and, get, and sit out in a seat and just let, get, nothing like coming to church. It's like a spiritual uh, battery charger. Can I get a good amen? amen? Where we build ourselves up and so, if, if you can get here, we, get here, we love you and we're excited about church. We're looking forward, don't for, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the arena day. We've, we're always trying to do things in our arena to reach people with the gospel. I was reached at a cowboy church just like this 27 years ago in a gravel parking lot at an arena just like this. Somebody shared the gospel with me. So let's, uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Lord, we just ask you to speak to our hearts today. May your word penetrate our hearts. and. May we leave here different than we came because your word transforms us. May we be challenged and stretched today, Lord, to walk closer to you and to follow you and ask you, Lord, to every day may we ask you to direct and lead and guide our lives. And we just ask you to speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. How many of you thankful that God loves us today? Amen. Amen. In Sunday school, they were bringing up some subjects, you know, we were talking about different things, and we were talking about one, one question was, you know, why do we stray off? One guy said, well, you know, when I was young, I kind of strayed off from my walk with the Lord, and, and we're like, okay, we'll all raise our hand on that one. Any of you ever strayed off a little bit? But we were talking, it just humbles me, and, and yet what, what is meant to destroy us by Satan, the enemy, if we if we will allow God to restore us, he'll use what was meant for bad and use it for good. Amen. It's a humbling thing that God loves us just like the prodigal son last Sunday we talked about. Remember, you know, he went out and found himself feeding pigs and, and said, you know, my, my father's hired servants are better off than I am. I'm going to go back and just be a servant. But that wasn't God's plan. That wasn't the father's plan. He saw him afar a off, the Bible says, and he ran and met his son and and hugged him. Aren't you glad that God run, runs to meet you and I, amen, when we come home? And, and, and not only that, what we learned last Sunday, he celebrates. He has a, a party, a celebration for us when we come back to him. But I want to challenge you today. Miss, Miss Cheryl, I'm going to ask you to put that pick up when you can. I, we use this pick here around the church. Um, I found this one time and I thought, man, that's powerful. Someone somewhere is depending on you to do what God has called you to do. 
Let's say it together. Someone, somewhere, is depending on you to do what God has called you to do. So it's important that we all just do our part for God. Now, not everybody's called, thank God, to do the same thing. We have different things. There's different people that we can influence in our lives in very different ways. I've got a lot of people that I've met and known through 20-something years worth of ministry. And everybody's story, thank God, is a little different. But God uses everybody's story in a little different way, a little different opportunities and things that we can do. And, and you know, you never know what God's going to do with your life. Can I get a good amen? Everybody say this with me. God is smarter than I am. And how many of you already knew that? <laughs> but that's okay. It's good to know that we, we're, we're in covenant with a God that is much wiser and smarter than we are. Knows everything. Therefore, we don't have to worry. Sometimes we waste a lot of time worrying when we should just be leaning back and trusting Him. And saying, Lord, just lead and guide the ship. And my job is to trust you. That's easy said. But the more we walk with Christ, the more we mature in him, the more we become like him. And he can take things in our life. And when we're younger and we don't realize, I remember, I'm going to chase a rabbit for just a second. But yesterday I was messing around on YouTube and I got to looking back years ago in the early 90s when there was a, how many of you remember the Bull Riders Only? It was kind of like PBR now, the Bull Riders only. So I started watching some of that, and I really liked old Terry Don West. Terry Don West was a rank bull rider. Man, he could hang on to one. And uh, it showed Terry Don get on Bodacious in Houston. If you remember that, he jerked him down. One of those horns hit him and collapsed the lung, broke several ribs. Now, he rode Bodacious a couple of times. The first time that Terry Don West rode Bodacious, he won $181. <laughs> man I think I'd happen a little more he said the second time he rode bodacious he won 10,000 that's more like it amen but I was watching that old bull riders only and I think in those days I, that year was 1993 that I happened to watch that one deal and I had just given my life to Christ that very same year had uh, I even I watched uh, Terry Don ride achy breaky in Denver at a bull riders only and I remember in, in Nacogdoches Texas on my birthday in 1994 I went to a Norman Curry, had a 50 head bull riding, and I entered that thing as an alternate, and man, by the grace of God, it was on my birthday, I turned 24 that day, I got in the bull riding, drawed a bull, and rode that bull and win, won the long round, and in the short round, Sammy Andrews pulled up with a 20 foot stock trailer with five bulls in it. Sammy Andrews had the greatest bulls on the planet at that time and still has some bad ones today from what I hear. He's still getting with it. There was Achy Breaky, that's the bull at Terry Don Road, a Dagger, so there was five bulls. And so the top five bull riders went to the short round and it was just Sammy Andrews, five, I mean, every one of them been at the NFR that year. And so, long story short, they bucked all five of us off in the short round. <laughs> Amen. They dumped us pretty quick. But... Uh, the next year, you know, I'd given my life to Christ, and God blessed me and used bull riding to draw me to Him, and and He moved me on, you know, on to other things. Bull riding is a young man's sport for sure. But in 1994, I I drove up to the Expo Center, I entered the Bull Bash in Lufkin, Texas, and looked at the draw, and it said J31. How many of you know what that brand is? That's bodacious. <laughs> And everybody was happy but me. All right? They were glad I, I had him, and they didn't. I remember I, when I looked at the draw, I saw Brent Thurman and Randy Thornton, and they said, ooh, J31. It was like, praise the Lord. He got him, not us. But anyway, so I get on Bodacious and Lufkin. He was, he was a rank bull. He did buck me off. Probably five seconds into it, he uh, he yard darted me and did I did the scorpion. I landed on my face and my feet went over my head. Amen. Did the scorpion. He drove me in the ground, and I thought, dang boy, I, I thought I was gonna get him rode, but but he did buck me off. But I think about what did I say earlier? I got a point here. God is smarter than we are. Little did I know. Many years later, I don't know about two thousand six. Uh, I don't know, no, 2010 or 12, maybe 7 or 8, in the 2000s, somewhere in there, 2007 or 8, I can't remember. The first time I had the strength team come to my church in Nacogdoches, I became friends with them. 
And they said, man, you ought to start hitting the gym. We'd love to have, I, I, I was it, used to ride bulls. They said, man, you ought to start working out with us. So I went and worked out with them. I was a little bitty dude, about 165 pounds, and uh, started working out with them. Spent years in the gym after that. But you would be surprised at thousands of school assemblies where I've spoke to large crowds of young people. And bullying was a huge problem and still is in school today. What did we say? God is smarter than us. God used me getting on boat. I was able to go into schools and use that illustration of first thing I do is say, I know what a real bully is. And we put a picture of Bodacious on the screen. And if that wasn't enough, we'd put a video of him slam dunking and yard darting somebody, <laughs> making him do the scorpion move. He was a bad cat. So I said, you know, I know, but yet God used those times in my life. Can I get a good amen? amen. And some of the times now, when I was out through there and, and, and Bodacious drove me in the ground and my head went, looked like an a, a ostrich with my head in the sand, I hit so hard. I didn't think much positive was coming out of that that day, all right? I just tried to make sure I wasn't knocked out and tried to get out of the arena. But you know, God's smarter than us. I was able to use that for young people from Oregon, uh, actually from Washington State to Florida for a few years. And so you never know. God's much wiser than us. I did chase the rabbit. But my point is, nothing in your life will be wasted if you truly surrender it to God. Even your mistakes. One or two of us made a mistake. Even your, the things that you've been successful at and that God has blessed you with, no matter what it is, God will use those for your good. So somebody somewhere is dependent on you. Psalms chapter 25, verse 1 will be our first scripture. Psalms 25, verse 1. It says, the Psalm of David, this is not very long, so many of you with a short attention span will love this verse. It says, O Lord, I give my life to you. That's a good, let's say it together. Oh Lord, I give my life to you. You know that's something that we are to, that's a short psalm, but one of my favorite psalms. That's something that we probably need to do every day. We talk about rededicating our life to the Lord. If the truth be known, we probably need to do that very often. Because we've all sinned and fallen short. But every day, I love that verse says, Oh Lord, I give my life to you. That should be one of our daily prayers. Every day, we need to make sure we commit our life to the Lord. It's easy to get so fast-paced. When we get up in the morning, we're running and ripping and trying to go. I get up real early in the morning, drink me some coffee, uh, watch a little, little, little uh, Bible verses on TV. I'll put on YouTube, look in some preacher I want to hear for a few minutes, listen to it, and get up and go face the day. But it's important that I don't get so busy that I don't say, Lord, I give you my life today. I commit it to you. Keep your hand on me. Lead me and guide me and direct me. So when we commit or dedicate our life to the Lord, we should do so and commit ourselves on a daily basis. Can I get a good amen? You say, well, why would I need to commit to the Lord on a daily basis? Well, because we, this old flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, the Bible says, but the flesh is weak. Think about the disciples. Remember when Jesus was about to be captured and taken in for his trial and then his journey of all these things were going to lead up to his crucifixion on the cross but remember when judas betrayed him with the kiss they take him in the garden and lead him away to go to a trial a rig trial at that but before that right before that went down jesus asked his disciples he said i'm going to pray and i want you to watch for me and I want to read you some scriptures. Matthew chapter 26, verse 38 through verse 43. Matthew 26, 38 through 43. 38, verse 38 says, He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And he went on a little farther and, and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My father... If it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me, yet I want your will to be done and not mine. That's a pretty good sermon right there. Verse 40, he says, it says, Then he returned to his, who? 
and found them watching and praying. What did he find them doing? How many of us in here like to sleep? We're like, Lord, we need to pray. But you know, thank God for sleep. But he told them, I want you to watch. I'm going to pray. And he gave them one job. Everybody say one job. And what did they do? They fell asleep. So that's why I say every day we need to commit. Oh God, I give my life to you because our flesh is weak. Our intentions are good and our spirit, I mean, we don't want to serve God, but we do have flesh and it is weak. But Jesus comes and he finds them asleep. And he said unto Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Man, can you imagine how Peter felt? <laughs> If Peter done told him a little bit further back, boy, I'll die for you. Remember? I'll go to prison. It doesn't matter, Lord. I'll do anything for you. And he falls asleep. And he says, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watching, pray, so that you will not give in to what? Temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Verse 42, then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, my father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it. Now this is powerful. What does he say? Your will be done. Aren't you glad that Jesus was willing to sacrifice for us? He didn't have to do it, but he did. Verse 43, when he returned to them again, he found them here we go again. <laughs> he found them sleeping for they couldn't keep their eyes open. You know it's important that we on a regular basis commit our life to God and go every day. We need to have a few seconds or minutes set aside with the Lord and say, Lord, I give you my life. Watch over me. Protect me. Guide me. Now, how many of us know we all call on the Lord when we know we really, really, really need him? We'll bear down then, right? We're like, oh, Lord, it's, it's me again. How you been doing? <laughs> I need you. And, and that's okay. But daily, Psalms 25, verse 1, Lord, I give you my life. Because the old world pulls on us all the time, right? And our, even our flesh. These guys were asleep. And you think about the disciples were asleep. What do we as Christians need to do? Number one, we need to be who we're created to be. God put you here for a purpose. And you just, really, it's not that complicated. As the older, the more you walk with Christ, you'll kind of learn where he wants you, and he'll take you through several different journeys. But the key is saying, Lord, I commit my life to you. It's not that complicated. It's pretty simple. It's kind of like the old horse that we always use. Because every day I catch from five to ten horses with a halter. Every day. And every day that I do it, I think about us. And I think about God and how he does. And, and I may, I'll walk down a barn aisle, you know, and I got an old halter. And you got one horse. He's standing at the barn, at, at, the, at, the, at the stall. And he's just there looking at you like, pick me. I'm bored in here. Come on in. Get me. I like them. All I do is open the stall door and their head's already sticking out. And he's trying to come out. I stick the halter on him and we roll. Then there's others that see me coming and they're like, oh boy. So they go to the corner of the stall, they turn their butt to me and put their head in the corner like this. Be as hard as possible under the circumstances to get caught, right? That's not us, so right? Praise the Lord. <laughs> if, if we're honest, raise your hand if that has been you and me. We've, we've done it. We're not, we're not fooling ourselves. But my point is, Psalms 25, 1 says, Lord, I give you my life. So every day, we need to step up to the front of that stall and say, Lord, I'm ready for my halter. I'm ready for my halter today. Amen. Can I get a good amen? amen? It's awesome that we committed to the Lord, you know, last Sunday or Monday or whatever. But every day, we need to offer, our, I, I offer ourselves to God. And by a horse submitting to an halter, a lot, of, a lot of horses that I catch, they're all real broke. They're either rope horses, barrel horses, whatever. They know what's up. They know the drill. Amen? You don't have to say, all right, we're going to rope this son of a gun and catch him and tie him down. Sticks his head out, and he receives that halter again. 
This is a simple message, but this is just like us and God. When, when the Lord, when I put this altar on the source, I'm trying to take care of it. And uh, it's the same way when God offers his altar to you, let's don't run from it. Let's just ease up there and stick our head out and say, Lord, have your way in my life. Amen. We learn anything today? <laughs> just, but we need to be who God created us to be. And it simply comes about by just saying, Lord, I give you my life. I prayed in April of 19... 93 in Trinity, Texas in a gravel parking lot. I didn't know come here from Sikkim. I didn't know one Bible book of the Bible from the other. I just bowed my knee in the parking lot and said, I need to give my heart to the Lord. The pastor said, well, pray with me. So we bowed our knee and I give my heart to Jesus Christ. And what happened was, it wasn't that I knew everything then, but I had given my heart to God. I had surrendered to Christ and said, Lord, have your way. Psalms 25, 1, Lord, I give you. Everybody say, give. give. I give you, Lord, my life. And man, it was powerful. God begins to work. And, and I don't know where God's going to got to do through us here at this church through the many years. But I'm excited about it. Amen. Amen. Just like the different times in my life when I got bucked off bodacious so hard I was like a yard dart. I didn't know that years later God would use that for me to speak to young people about a true bully. Can I get a good amen? Amen. So trust him in everything, every area of your life. You may not understand it all, but we should be praying, Lord, lead me, guide me, and direct me. But that's stay tight with the Lord. Can I get a good amen? And let, me, let me explain that to you. When I say stay tight with him, I want to go in Matthew chapter 26. Same set of verses, I mean, same chapter, but I'm going to read verse 57 and verse 58. And we all know the story that they fell asleep and then they arrested Jesus. And there was a struggle and Peter cut a guy's ear off. I mean, I like Peter in the Bible. How many of you like Peter? Because he reminds you of you. We got about 50% participation. If we're honest, Peter, when we read about Peter, we're all like, we were talking about it in Sunday school this morning. Because he reminds us of all of us, our hearts are good, we, we want to serve God, but things happen and we get distracted. Remember when Peter walked on water? Everybody wants to dog old Peter out because he sank, but none of us ever walked on water that I know of. Does anybody have a testimony today where you walked on water? That's good if you do. But Peter, yes, he sank, but he did have the courage to step over the edge of the boat and walk on water. The problem that he had was when he was, what, distracted by the other things. We just talked about this morning in Sunday school. He was distracted. And then, yet Peter finds himself asleep, and, and Jesus got on Peter a little bit and said, Dang, you couldn't stay awake for one hour? And we're going to see, it's fixing to get real. How many of you know life gets real at times? How many of you can in your mind already think of a time that you would say, man, life got real and, oh, for me at this time? It may be a hundred different stories, but it got real in our lives. And life was about to get real for Peter and the rest of the disciples and Jesus. They took him <laughs> before a, 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 a trial, before people to stand before him. And Peter follows, but this is the key. Everybody say, stay close. To the Lord. Even when you stumble. If you stumble, you ought to be the first one there. Say, Lord, I just I just stumbled. Go right back to him. Let him know what's going on. Remember how the prodigal son was received by his father? We already know how the, the, the character of, of God in his heart. Chapter 26, verse 57 and 58. When the people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Cyprus, the high priest, there were teachers of religious law and the elders had gathered. Verse 58. Meanwhile, Peter followed him. Now we're referring to Jesus, right? Peter followed him. Let's say these three words together at a... One more time. Peter followed him at a... Now, we don't want to follow the Lord at a distance. That's what Peter got in trouble when he followed him at a distance. So it says, he followed him at a distance and came to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and sat with the guards and waited to see how it would all end. So he followed Christ from a distance. 
We don't want to do that. Amen. We want to be close to the Lord. And my close relationship and your close relationship depends on us. Are we willing to take a few moments every day and get it started? I, I think it's important to get our day started on the right foot. Amen. Say, Lord, be with me today. I'm going to need We all know we're going to need him sometime throughout the day. Actually, we need him a lot more than we realize. Psalms 25, 1, Lord, I give you my life. Let's make sure that we are committed to him. And we don't follow the Lord from a distance. And we, we know the rest of the story. For sake of time, we won't read it all. But if you go home and read verse 69 through verse 75, we all know that th Peter denied that he ever knew Christ. He denied him three times. And then at the end... <laughs> It says in, in verse 74, Peter swore and said, a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know this man. And immediately the rooster, what? Crowed. Verse 75, suddenly Jesus' words flash through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. And he went away weeping bitterly. But aren't you glad that that ain't the end of the story? Because when Jesus went through the crucifixion, he died on the cross. Can you imagine how depressed, beat down that Peter must have felt? I mean, it would be like the loudest man in the room that here said, I got your back, Pastor Chet. I got you. And somebody comes in here and tries to give me a whooping after church. And we're the first one that cuts and runs. We'd be like, dang it. Let's pray that don't happen. Amen. I'm too old for all that. <laughs> My point is, your intentions might be good, but we'd be like, dang, that's tough. And you can imagine how Peter, of all, Jesus Christ himself, he said, Lord, I'll die for you. And Jesus said, you're going to deny me. And he did deny him. And it says that Peter went out and wept bitterly. But this is the cool thing. Later on, after Jesus was placed in a borrowed tomb, the reason you, you have a borrowed tomb is because you're only going to be there three days. Can I get a good amen? <laughs> he was placed in a borrowed tomb. The Bible says that on Easter Sunday, that's why we celebrate Easter, is that our Savior, not only did he die for our sins, but he rose victoriously. And he rose over death, hell, and the grave. Now let's give the Lord a good hand clap. So we no longer have to fear death. We can say, you know what? The Bible promises eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. So when I breathe my last on this earth, man, I always tell people, man, don't cry over me. I want you to rejoice and say that lucky son of a gun. He beat me to heaven. Because we're just passing through on this earth. But because of Christ and a relationship with him, our life is forever changed. But Jesus, once he rose from the grave, the stone was rolled away. The rock of our salvation was in a rock. A stone grave with a, a rock in front of it. The Bible says that stone was rolled away. The grave clothes were folded neatly. Can I get a good amen? The Bible says that Jesus rose from the grave. And when he did... He appeared again. And this is what he said. Go tell my disciples. Come on now. And Peter. Meet me in Galilee. You know he's telling Peter. Roll up your sleeves boy. This thing ain't over. He was probably depressed. Discouraged. Ready to give up. Anybody ever been there? We all have. Join the crowd. And you know what happened to Peter. I was telling him in Sunday school this morning, Peter steps out there and preaches the first sermon of his life, and 3,000 people come to Christ. Can I get a good amen? If you want to do some research and check me on that, read the early chapters of the book of Acts. But isn't it humbling that Psalms 25, 1, we're going to close with that, Miss Shirley, if you can pull it up. It's so, so short, ain't nothing to it, but it says, Oh Lord, I give you my life let's just say it together oh lord i give you my life and what we have to do is just surrender and submit our life to the lord just like a horse that meets me at the stall and is standing there waiting and just sticks his head in the halter he's ready to roll he wants some new shoes can i get a good amen 
He wants some new Reeboks or whatever he calls his shoes. He wants his feet done. He's ready to go run rope or run barrels or whatever it is. I pray that we meet the Lord. I mean, we meet him halfway at least and say, Lord, we're ready. We just submit our life to you. When you stumble and fall like everybody else and like Peter, hey, we just man up. We own it and say, Lord, forgive us. And you know what? He's not done with us yet. Amen. So let's submit and commit our lives to him on a daily basis. Let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. We ask you, Lord. May we be stirred today to leave here different than we came. And Lord, we give our lives to you and say, Lord, just whatever. You may be in the best shape of your life or the worst. Just give yourself to the Lord and say, take what I have, Lord, and I give it to you. Let's pray this prayer if you've never accepted Christ or you need to rededicate your life. This is a prayer I prayed. Oh, God, I realize I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, and have your way in my life from this day forward. I commit to you, Lord, to give you my life. And Lord, may you take up the slack where I need your help. Take the reins of my life. And I give my life to you from this day forward in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap today. And I'm so thankful. I know you are too, but I'm so thankful that we can submit and commit our lives to him every day. Can I get a good amen? Hey, new membership class is right after church. We're going to take about a five-minute break. If you're going to be in the new membership class, I've got everything set up here in the front row. And uh, Miss Jamie's going to help us out. Miss Allison will be around here. Uh, we got a little spiritual gifts test you can take as well. So about a five-minute break, and we'll get back in here. And then after the membership class, if you are staying, we are going to provide pizza for you.